Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, the number one place for data scientists, data engineers, and machine learning engineers. In this video, I'm really going to break down the top mistakes that I catch a lot of people making when searching for data science related positions. Now, this isn't to shade any of you guys out there because I have definitely made all of those mistakes myself. Otherwise, I won't be sharing them and telling you they are mistakes. But I really do genuinely hope by pointing them out, now you guys make the same mistakes and this is going to save you a lot of time and a lot of energy. On top of this, it's probably also going to help you diagnose your current strategy and change it in a way to get your dream job faster than you can imagine. That's why if you would like to learn the top, literally the top mistakes that I see other people making and also mistakes that I have made in my own job searches, then keep on watching. The top one mistake that I see a lot of people making is applying for different positions at the same time. Now I know if this isn't your first rodeo to my channel, you are probably sick of hearing me constantly talking about the importance of focusing on one type of position, especially if you are a beginner. But I got to tell you, focusing on one type of position was one of the most important and the best decisions that I made in my job search process. When I first looked for a job in the tech industry, I was applying for data scientist, data analyst, software engineer, machine learning engineer, and so on and so forth. Literally any position that I feel I might have a slight chance getting into. Because I did not think I was in a position that I could pick and choose as I had no work experience and I was not competitive. So whenever I saw a position that had some openings, I felt like I should apply for it to get interviews. But it turned out that it was not only inefficient to get interviews, but also very inefficient to prepare for interviews. The reason that it was inefficient to get interviews was that I spent too much time creating different versions of my resume and applying for different jobs. The overall conversion rate from an application to an interview was very low. In fact, for many positions that I didn't have relevant experience, I did not hear back from any of my applications. On top of that, applying for multiple different positions was ineffective for interview preparation. Because I was studying so many things at the same time, I was overwhelmed and I was not good at anything. So even for the limited number of interviews I got, I failed all of them. About a few months after I started my job search, I realized that I have to change my strategy. Otherwise, I would probably give up because I was so discouraged and overwhelmed. Then I chose the position that I was most interested in and I felt most confident about, and that was the data scientist position. Afterwards, I chose to only learn the core skills that I need to land a data scientist job. Guess what? I was able to land a job offer within a month. Now, if you think this is my unique experience, I want to share with you guys the story of one of my subscribers. Well, this is just one of the many success stories that I heard and received after people changed their strategy to focus on one type of position. Here's the message I got. This person said, I was confused if I should be looking for machine learning opportunities or general data science jobs and was applying for everything. After reading through your blog and watching videos, I changed my resume focusing on the metrics and started applying for product data scientist roles by the end of March. I got a few calls, all of which I was able to turn into on-site interviews and multiple offers. Last week, I accepted my data scientist product analytics role at Facebook. This is a dream job for me working in product data science, and I wouldn't have reached this milestone without your help. So guys, the takeaway here is to focus on one type of position and only learn things relevant to it. I cannot emphasize this enough because this is the difference that makes the difference. Now, moving on to the next mistake that I see many people make is that they go to an interview without being ready for it. Sometimes they don't even know what will be asked. I know this may sound dumb, but when I was starting out, when I was looking for jobs the first time, I heard that job search is a numbers game from many sources, and I believe that if I get enough interviews, I will finally land a job offer. So instead of being fully prepared for each interview, I put more focus on getting more interviews. But I was not able to crack any of them because I was not ready for it. Let me share a few experiences. 
There was one coding interview that asked me four questions, including two easy ones, one medium, and one hard question. Before the interview, I felt pretty confident about my coding skills because I have done some coding-heavy data science projects, including implementing algorithms from scratch and optimizing runtime by comparing different algorithms, and etc. So I was confident in coding interviews. However, in the actual interview, I realized that it's totally different when you write code by yourself versus when you code during an interview where you explain your thought process while you are coding and you need to make sure you don't introduce any bugs. Finally, I was only able to solve two easy questions and was not able to solve the medium or the hard one. So clearly, I failed the interview. Another experience I had was a presentation interview, and the company asked me to present my most impactful project. I made an assumption that my audience would be data scientists, so I introduced lots of technical terms, such as statistics and machine learning terminologies, with the intention to impress my audience how challenging and difficult the project was. But it turned out that the audience was a mix of data science managers and product managers, and they were more interested in the business impact of the project rather than the technical details. And I did not expect that at all, so I did not do well in that interview. Obviously, not being prepared was not the right attitude to approach interviews, but after many people reached out to me and shared their stories with me, I realized that I was not the only person who was not prepared for interviews. Some people told me the reason they failed the interview was that they did not expect any coding questions, so they did not prepare for it at all. Some people told me that they were not fully prepared for in-depth questions on projects on their resumes. There are also people who told me that the reason they failed the interview was because they were not familiar with the company's products at all. By pointing out the mistake of not being prepared for an interview, I really hope everyone who's listening takes interviews seriously. One simple reason is that people who land a job faster are those who are well-prepared or even over-prepared for interviews. This is based not only on my experience going through several job searches, but also from experiences of many people who reach out to me and share their stories. So now my philosophy is don't treat interviews as a pure practice opportunities. Even though job search is a numbers game, each person has a different conversion rate from one stage to the next. Some people can convert 80% of their interviews into offers, while someone else's conversion rate is zero. So make sure you know what kind of questions you will be asked and be fully prepared or even over-prepared for every single interview. Not only this, by studying systematically and being fully prepared for interviews, you are front-loading the work. You will not only reap the benefits of asking the interviews, which is to get the job offer you want, but also the benefits of applying what you have learned to your day-to-day -day job as a data scientist. Now, moving forward to the last mistake I want to talk about, and that is paralysis by analysis. This might ruffle a lot of feathers, but you know what? I'm okay with this because this is my honest opinion or what I believe is a really big mistake that a lot of people make, including myself, and that is overanalyzing or worrying if something is helpful rather than taking actions to learn. I fully understand that people care about efficiency. I understand that adults make decisions seriously. We care about our eyes, and we don't want to spend time on anything that's not useful, right? But the mistake I want to point out is worrying about whether learning something would be helpful before taking actions to learn. Now, I want to give you guys an example, a bad example, and I really hope none of you guys make the same mistake. There's one person who reached out to me for help. He told me that he really wanted to change his job to find a better job in a top tech company. He was able to get all the interview opportunities from all the big companies, all the top tech companies in Silicon Valley. But he failed all the technical interviews because he did not know how to answer questions on product, metrics, or A-B testing. Even though he had lots of work experience, he had a little experience working on customer-facing products. So he did not know how to approach those questions. When I asked him about what resources he was using to learn, he told me this is literally what he told me. 
I casually read some medium posts before interviews because reading books is very time consuming and I don't know if it's worth it. I have to say this is really bad. Because of this mindset that reading books is time consuming, he did not take enough action to learn, even though he's aware of those gaps. Also, because of this mindset, he missed many opportunities to join a better company or even his dream company. Another reason I also include this mistake as one of the top mistakes that people make is that I feel many people spend too much time analyzing or comparing which book or which course is better without taking time to learn. I sometimes have people reach out to me and ask me these kind of questions. Is the book you recommended in your YouTube video really helpful? Are the resources you recommended in your blog post really helpful? If I want to select the most useful one, which one should I choose? Well, I totally understand the intention of those questions that the people want to choose the best book, the best course to invest in. But the fact is, you only know if something is helpful after you learn it. Other people's experience might not apply to you because others have different levels of skills than you. They might have much less or much more knowledge than you on a certain topic. So what they found helpful might not apply to you. Not only this, time and time again, I observe people who get the results faster than others are those who simply take actions. Instead of researching which book is helpful, which online course is useful, they just pick one and start learning. And once they learn more and more, they become better at it, eventually they are able to build a solid data science foundation to ace all kinds of interviews. So if you realize you have a knowledge gap and you know there's a book or a course could help you gain the knowledge and fill the gap, then simply take actions rather than spending too much time analyzing if it would be helpful or not. Remember that you will not regret any investment in yourself. If this is the only takeaway in this video, I hope you remember this. Alright guys, you have just learned the top mistakes and I really hope you don't make those mistakes. And that being said, if you feel you get stuck or you want to learn how to unblock yourself to get the results you want, then make sure to hit the notification bell because in the next video, I will talk about how to unblock yourself to land the job you desire as soon as you want. So again, guys, I want you to hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next video. In the meantime, while you wait for the video to be public, I want you to check out these two videos right here. I talk a lot about data science interviews, data engineering interviews, and machine learning interviews. The tips and strategies I share would be helpful for you, especially if you are someone who is actively looking for jobs in the tech industry. As always guys, I appreciate you for watching this video. Feel free to drop me a comment if you have any questions or feedback. Stay tuned, I will see you soon.